All right, it's lunchtime, or more accurately, as usual, it's past lunchtime. So it's well time that I get something to eat. So what's on the menu today? How about fettuccine Alfredo, made out here in the woods? But of course it's going to be a keto or low carb version. If you're interested, keep watching. So it has been a while since I've made a good hot meal out here in the woods, mostly because, uh, well, I have been traveling most of the summer. It's also been very hot and there's been an ongoing fire ban that most people are aware of. In fact, there's still a fire ban on today. The way it works here right now, I can have a fire after seven o'clock this evening, but not before. So I am going to be cooking over a nice old butane stove. And um, okay, so that's the, what I'm going to be doing. Why don't we just get to it? All right, we're going to try and move things along here as quickly as I can because basically, well, I'm hungry. Uh, let's start with this, the stove that I'm using today. This is the Fire Maple Sunflower. Different name for stove, right? Well, it's a different looking stove for sure. What makes this stove good for the purpose I'm putting it through today is the fact that it, it is a butane stove with a remote canister sitting over here right here so you can see. I'll be reviewing this separately so uh, watch for that review if you're interested. But what I like about this stove is that it has a ceramic block built into it full of holes and that's where the gas diffuses through. So when you light it up it's more like a radiant heat. The heat is distributed, dispersed across the whole grill and you'll see it actually glow red in a moment when I get it lit up. The benefit of that is no hot spots or very like less chance of a hot spot. So in the fry pan and everything else that I'll be using, it, I can turn it down to a nice low uh, temperature so that uh, I'm less likely to burn anything. And that's important when you're frying, but it's also important when you're trying to simmer. All right, so what makes fettuccine Alfredo? Well, basically, it is noodles, some type of a fettuccine noodle, with the main ingredients being Parmesan cheese, heavy cream, and butter and garlic, lots and lots of garlic. Most of the recipes that I came across had between three and six full cloves of garlic. And in full disclosure, I did not bring any garlic out with me, but I have lots of garlic powder, or granulated garlic. In fact, that's what I'm gonna be using because I didn't bring the bulbs, the garlic bulbs out with me. But I'm gonna be adding two more ingredients just to take it to the next level. Bacon, right, bacon, and mushrooms, but not just any mushrooms, miyatake. And for those of you in the know, Miyataki, also known as Hen of the Woods. This was picked by my brother-in-law down in the Annapolis Valley. Fortunate that he gave me some and didn't hoard it all to himself. Thank you, Bob, for sharing. And, uh, oh, what a flavor. If you've ever never tried Miyataki or Hen of the Woods, if you can get your hands on some, it's just a marvelous flavor. And it's going to work really well with everything else that I'm mixing or making this meal out of. Probably what I want to show you that is the star of the show is the actual fettuccine noodles that I'm using because normally noodles, regular wheat noodles, are not on the keto diet. They're not low carb. But I have started using some different types of noodles to find ones that would work in dishes. And this is one that I'm actually quite fond of. This is made by a company called... See if I can bring it to you. I'll put, put the information, of course, in the video description. L I V I. V-A. Livia? Livia? Um, I know I'm mispronouncing that. But these ones, and they have different materials that they make their noodles out of, but these fettuccine noodles are made from uh, organic edamame. Yeah, that's kind of different, right? Organic edamame. Now, let me just put my glasses on here because I just want to give you an idea about these needles, noodles, and I'll show you a few of them, of course. So a quarter of the package has 180 calories. It only has three grams of fat, which is pretty low. Now, this is going to sound misleading because it has 20 grams of, of uh, carbohydrates, and, and I know the purists out there are saying, but that's not keto. That would be true, except 15 of those grams are fiber. That's pretty impressive when you think of it. So five grams, a quarter of this package has five to, uh, net uh, grams of fiber, 19 grams of protein. Right, 19 grams of, well, it's soya. That's what edamame is. It's made from soybean. So... Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually not a bad uh, alternative to regular pasta. Now, I'm going to show you this. I don't want anybody under the illusion that it's a one-for-one -one replacement with regular noodles. It is not. It has a different look. It has a different texture and not so much of a flavor. Like there is, somebody might notice the flavor. I don't because usually what I've got it mixed with. But it does have a bit of a different texture. But if you're looking for something that's just like a regular noodle, this is not the one for you. But if you're looking something for just a little bit of a different texture in your meal, 
still very palatable, still very enjoyable. This is maybe something you want to look at. And these are available in the grocery stores. And in fact, I bought some of these, maybe in this package, at Walmart. So they're readily available. Yeah, they're a good noodle choice. All right, enough about the noodles, but that is what's going to make it from nothing, uh, something that's not on the keto or low-carb diet to something that is. All right, we have to get this going. So the first thing I'm going to do is in this process is my bacon. Now, I might as well show you these as well. The two pans that I'm using, or the fry pan and the pot, come from a set that I've also reviewed from Fire Maple known as the Feast 4. I just took out two of the items. There is actually two more items, a larger pot than that, which would have been way big, and a kettle. So I'll be using the fry pan and the smaller of the two pots to cook this meal up. So where is my lighter? It's in my pocket. We're going to light the gas stove up. Um, there. One of the things I find about this right off of the top is you almost can't hear it. Now I can feel the, oh yeah, there it comes. Okay, I can feel the heat. And I can lean this forward. Can you start to see the glowing red? That'll get quite a bit redder in a moment. Um, again, this is not about the stove. This is about the, uh, the meal itself, but the stove is part of it, obviously. Look how quiet it is. That's full blast. That's full blast heat, so that's a very, very quiet stove. All right, I've got to get my bacon out as that just finishes warming up. Get my bacon into the fry pan and get it on the heat. And I'm going to turn the heat down in a moment and then start moving around. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to work this bacon for a few minutes until it's not completely uh, rendered down, but it's got a good start on it, and then I'll bring you back. All right, my bacon is coming along nicely, starting to get a little browned around the edges there, loving this fry pan. This stove is doing a good job of that. I could probably turn it down a tiny bit more, but uh, so far I'm just not seeing anything stick. Okay, just while I'm doing this and finishing off, I just want to give a shout out to a friend of mine. This has appeared in another video, but it is a tool roll for kitchen cooking items. And it's made by a friend of mine, Rob Young, and his company is the uh, Crafted Woodsman. I'll put a link to Rob's Facebook page, but this is a great little thing for uh, wrapping up all my little implements, like my... Pay attention, Mark, before you get it all stuck. All right, I'm going to turn that down just a tiny bit more. Yep, all right, still good. And add the next ingredient. Helicopter flying over, not unusual here, which is the Mayatake mushrooms. Add those in, and I'm going to fry those for a few minutes, and then we'll go on to the next step. A couple minutes more, and my bacon, mushrooms are all cooked up. Now, I'm just going to leave them right in the pan for now, put them aside. I'm going to bring my pot out, but I'm not going to put it on the burner too quickly here. Because uh, you have to be paying attention to this next part. This is where the temperature control gets really, really vital. Let's see what I can bring out here. I've got a couple of uh, utensils. Uh, let's start with the cream. I'm going to put a heavy cream in my pot. You really don't want the cream to burn. Getting a few pine needles in at the same time. Extra flavor, I guess. And the butter. So I'm going to be melting very slowly the butter and the cream at the same time. And the cheese. i got to put the Parmesan cheese in here all at the same time and bring it melt together. And you got to keep it moving. Parmesan cheese. Um, I've got about almost a half cup. Actually, more than a half cup. So I'm going to put in my half cup. And what I'll be doing after that is I've saved a little bit back. If it looks thin, I will add more. If it looks thin, I'll be able to add a little bit of water. Okay. Now, a whisk, all important. Let's keep things moving. So I'm just going to keep things moving until it's all nicely melted. And that's when I'll bring it back. All right, full disclosure, I made a major error in the cooking. Hopefully it's something I can recover from. And that is, I should have done the noodles and left the sauce to be the last thing. Okay. What am I going to do here? Okay, I'm going to turn the stove off because I can always turn it back on. 
So my sauce is ready. You can see I probably will add a little bit more cheese in that. I want to do that right now because I like it nice and thick. Let's add some more cheese in. And there's probably enough heat to melt that. Yes, I should have done the noodles first. I could put the noodles aside easier than I could put the cheese aside. You should use the cheese sauce as soon as it's ready, like it is right now. But as it is, I'm going to have to put this in my bowl. See, that's looking pretty good. The cheese just a little bit more melty here. I'm going to have to put this in a bowl do my noodles up and then add the sauce back in and I should have done it the other way around right okay so I'm going to work off camera for a minute or two I'm going to bring some water to a boil I'm going to put the noodles in and that's when I'll bring it back okay I did skip ahead very quickly uh, I put my noodles in I cooked them and then I drained them off there's just a tiny bit Hope that's enough noodles. I think it will be. So what I'm going to do now is I've just turned the stove back on. I gave it a couple seconds rest. Turning the temperature down a little bit because it doesn't need much. And here's where I hope I have not ruined my meal. I'm going to put the uh, Alfredo sauce with the mushrooms and everything else all mixed in. Put it back in with the noodles. Oh, I don't think I've ruined it. This smell is outrageous. Put that aside. Put it back on the heat just for a minute. Just enough to combine everything together. You can see there's steam rising. Oh yeah, I think that's a... Uh... <laughs> No, I guess I don't think I ruined a thing. And if the smell is any judge of it, it's going to be simply amazing. Okay. I think it's hot enough. I see some bubbles rising. I don't want anything to burn. I'm going to turn this off, reposition the camera, and let's do a taste test. All right, time for the taste test. Bandana for my knee. My double wall Keith titanium bowl. A little silicone cover I bought for it. On top. I think despite my reservations and concerns about having ruined it because I missed the sequence, I think it's going to be okay. Let's just have a look. I'll give you a look. You see the noodles, mushrooms, bacon. Mmm. Oh my goodness. So one of the things that I didn't show doing um, on camera was I added my garlic powder and some crushed herbs that I have. Nicer if they're fresh, better if I could have had a full three cloves of garlic, which I didn't have to bring out. I think I would, I think it would be just that much better with fresh garlic. Of course it would be that much better with fresh garlic. And my brother-in-law Bob actually grows garlic and we just didn't have any yet. But I had that miyatake, that hen of the woods and bacon. Mm. And I was pretty sure the flavors of the Parmesan, the bacon, and the miyatake would work really well together, and I was right. And when you add the garlic on top of that, holy smokes. This is restaurant quality stuff. Now the noodles. People are wondering, what are the noodles like? Well, let me see if I can bring just one noodle up to show you. It's, even when it's cooked, uh, they do get they get nice and soft. Actually, they're almost instant. The moment they hit the water, they get soft. So you could probably use them in an instant meal. Uh, but they stay a la dente. In other words, they're always a little bit of texture. They never seem to go, they never go to mush. And they never seem to get really, really soft. They always have a little bit of texture that you can feel in your mouth. Personally, I like that. It feels like you actually got something in your mouth that you're eating. Wow. Well, that hen of the woods really made this, and the bacon, and the cheese. Okay, you don't have to be on a ketogenic or low-carb diet like I am in order to enjoy this. You can make it with regular noodles, uh, if that's what your preference is, if you like that. 
I would encourage you to try the edamame noodles because um, you you might just find that you like the texture and they're lower carbs, right? They're they're organic. They're full fiber, 15 grams of fiber in a quarter package. Yeah, nothing nothing wrong with that at all. But I would encourage you to get out and give this a try. Now, I didn't give you any measurements. I, what I'll do is I'll give you the measurements that I used with a recipe in the video description below. Nice thing about this is you can vary it. You can alter it to your taste, whatever it is that you want to do. I think if I was going to do anything different, I may add just a little bit more cheese. My sauce is not too liquid, but I think the water that was still left on the noodles when I mixed them together kind of made it a little bit more liquid after the fact. I was very fortunate that I didn't ruin the sauce. I'm not a cook. I never claimed to be. And it, I was out of sequence. I should have done the, the, well, I did do the bacon and the mushrooms. And then I should have done the noodles, put the noodles aside, done the sauce, and then put, dumped everything back in. But it all got back into the same pot. It all got heated up. It didn't ruin anything. And is just simply amazing. Okay. As I mentioned, I'll put the recipe as I used it today in the video description below. I'll put the name of this company, maybe their website for these noodles, and I bought them. I bought them at Walmart. They weren't sent to me or anything. So that you can check them out because they have other noodles made from black beans as well, which are look really interesting. And shirataki or, or konjac is the other name for it. And konjac is, is the one that's most closely looks and maybe has the texture of regular pasta. And But it's got some unique features about it that you have to be careful when you're... Uh, cooking just to make sure that you cook. It's, it's not the cooking of it. You have to rinse it well. I guess that's all it is. It's just an extra step of making sure it's rinsed because when you open the package, it has this funny smell on it. But once you rinse it off, the smell goes away. Okay, having said that, that's all I have. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.